Hey guys, spring is finally here, so I'm outside. You can see a tiny bit of green on those bushes back there. Uh, it's coming, finally. Um, today I wanted to do a simple painting from, sorry, I just bumped the mic, from Mongolia. Um, I had the privilege of going there last summer. I think it was, last, yeah, last summer. And so I thought I'd walk you through this process, simple little gear, some horses in the back, and without further ado, we will jump right into it. All right, so I already have this sketched up. I have a gear, and then we're gonna do some horses. They're just gonna be tiny little shapes, basically in the background. Simple sky, uh, simple mountains, and I have moved a few things around um, that weren't that way in the reference. Just changed a few things depending on how I wanted them to be. So we will start with the sky. Um, I am going to try to bring the palette into view every so often when I'm mixing so you guys can see that because I know I haven't been doing that in the last few videos. Let me know what you guys think if you like seeing that. Um, if you do, I will try to get it in more often. I haven't quite figured out a good way to do it. That's the only thing. Obviously, if I had a if I had a table that I was working on, I could just do it on the side, but I don't. Since I'm on the easel, I could put the palette down on my shelf below, but then obviously the view that you guys would be seeing would be much further out. So, I don't know. Alrighty, there's our sky. I am using my uh, sketchbook, so this is sketchbook paper. Okay. Our hills are quite a bit um, darker because they're in the distance. So I'm using some sap green. I'm just gonna leave them light for now. Um, and then we can always go darken them up later. I just, I don't know. I might leave them light. I might just see how that looks if they're light. What I will do though is uh, vary the color a little bit. Maybe put some brown in there. Just make it have a little bit of life. Okay, and we'll go. Along this way. Chimney is dark, so I'll just go right over it because we'll just cover it up later. Super simple. And we may as well keep going, since this is all going to be green as well. I'm going to bring in some yellows. I'll go around these little horses. I probably could just paint over them, honestly. But I'm just going to avoid them for now. Um, mostly because I'm, I'm not sure we might leave a white one in there or something. And if we do, then Obviously it helps having the white space. Okay. This sketch paper dries quite a bit faster than the arches. Stuff I normally paint on, so I do have to work a little faster. Can't really see that. Just taking more sap green and I'm mixing in a little bit of yellow ochre at times. We'll leave space around this. I'm gonna put a yellow streak through here. And then green. Sometimes I'll um, Put the sketchbook up so I don't need to like paint down in that edge because what will happen is the water will all run down there and then I'm left with kind of a gross puddle but I didn't do that and there's no time to do it now so we will carry on I'm just darkening this up a little bit so with some Payne's gray right here and then some sap green Payne's gray Whoop. And we'll just go right across the bottom. Just 
gonna touch up these spots. I, I have these um, binder clips here holding the paper down. So really what I'll probably do is just cut the paper right off right there, but I did leave these weird spots. Ah, now that I'm touching them, they're getting weirder. So I'll just leave that. Okay, we'll let this dry. I'm just pulling off some of the water that's beaded down at the bottom and we will start on the next layer as soon as it's dry. Okay, I think it's dry enough for us to start our second layer. So I'm gonna leave those tails nice and light. Um, I'm not gonna do like they do in the picture where it's kind of a dark area with the storm clouds. I'm gonna keep it a nicer day. Um, so all I'm gonna go over with my second layer, just doing sap green here and a um, tiny bit of, I'm just trying to vary it up. So I don't wanna be using sap green all the way along. And I'm just going to go over everywhere that is not the distant mountains. So we'll go through here. Probably be darkening it up a fair bit. We'll do some of these kind of streaks. I don't really want hard edges. So I'll just do some lighter spots like that. Still leaving some white space for potentially here I'll turn it this way um, potentially for some I think we'll do one white horse at least in there okay now as we get closer to the front I will be doing some harder edges so in here I will I'm just gonna stop that off there we'll just go like this leave some spaces doing some yellow ochre with some sap green like that just to add some texture here in the foreground I'll make it a little more green on the right hand side the picture kind of has it greener over here there and then it gets darker green again right underneath the gear over here left some gaps just gonna leave those and I will just maybe kind of close that off perfect okay so the edges are almost dry enough that we can get in there um, for the actual color of the gear, I had two ideas that I was kind of debating between. So I thought I'd let you guys in on that decision. So this is just my other sketchbook. So I had two, yeah, two ideas. One was kind of doing a yellow ochre mixed with a tiny bit of blue to gray it up. So that's the yellow ochre. And then the other is, um, raw umber with ultramarine, which I had originally thought I would, I would do for it. But on looking at this now, this is really pretty gray. And I like that a lot better. So that's what we're going to go for. Um, what I'll often do when I get to places like that is that's what I'll do. I'll just grab a piece of, uh, I sometimes have some scrap paper or whatever, and just do a little swatch and make sure that I'm happy with the color before I go and stick it on. So I'm doing yellow ochre here, a little bit of blue in there. Uh, I don't want it to be too blue. I still want it to be kind of yellowy, but a tiny bit of blue to brown it up a bit and we'll keep it light on top maybe a little more yellow on the top i mean yellow ochre sorry and we'll go right to the top of the gear because we will be putting in black or dark shadowy holes later and then on the side it is darker so i'm going to actually put in a little bit of brown a little bit of yellow ochre, and a touch of blue, a little more yellow. There you go. Okay, so it kind of darkens on its way down. Door is a different color, so we skip the door. We need to negative paint around this little jerry can water jug leave that little red bag and then the bicycle we'll go right up 
against right up behind the bicycle. And that, we'll go right over this stuff too because we're just gonna add dark onto there later. Okay. Now we'll let that dry and we'll probably end up doing another darker layer on the, the bottom part just to give it a bit more shadow because the, the, those two tones are pretty similar right now. I will though, as we wait, go in and we're just gonna do strong yellow ochre on the door. So this is pretty pure. Okay. It will bleed in a little bit to the other stuff if we touch. So straight out of the, uh, well out of the tube or out of the pan, not mixed at all. And we're going right over the whole door. So the water jug is actually pretty much the same color. It's kind of a white as well. I, I just don't know if I want to keep it that way. Um, this metal can over here is what I often use for that is a little bit of blue. So I have a little bit of leftover blue. Switching to a smaller brush. Uh, I'll use a little bit of blue because it ends up looking metallic a little bit if you just have a bit. So we'll go like that. It has a space in the middle. And then I'm gonna use, use a little bit of Payne's Gray. Do that on the one side. The jug, I might just take the same. No, I don't wanna do the same color though. I'll do the bottom and leave because there is a bit of a highlight on the top like that. And then what we will do is when we do the rest of this darker, um, we won't go over the jug. So the jug will stay light. All right, let's let this all dry and when we will revisit that spot. Okay, second layer on the shadowed part of the gear. So yellow ochre, oh my, sorry. Yellow ochre and a little blue. Too much blue, more yellow ochre. This is gonna be much more of a shadowy color. So it'll be a little bit more brown. And we're just doing the side. Putting in a tiny bit of brown. I'm just negative painting around and I'm gonna go, let's see. Yeah, we'll go right over the bicycle. If we need to bring out any white, we will do that later with white paint. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna work on some distant horses. So I'm using uh, burnt sienna. We're gonna kind of have a reddish horse in there. Back in here. And then I'm gonna take a dark brown, maybe even mix it with Payne's Gray. I'm using my really little brush because these horses are tiny. And I'm really not concerned about much except for putting a few little shapes. I'm gonna leave a white one there in the middle. I'm gonna do another little brown one. Put a few little legs. Okay, and then off to the side, we'll maybe have another kind of reddish one. Oops, more red. I'm avoiding the spots. I have a whole bunch of blue in there from when I was mixing up dark colors. So I'm avoiding those spots. Go here. And can put in maybe a, a lighter color one. So this is yellow ochre. That white one isn't really standing out because uh, <laughs> because I actually like left too big of a white spot. So I'm maybe just gonna put in another half a horse here. Okay, wow, that did. I mean, you don't really need to make it look like a horse, but that definitely does not look like a horse. Okay, fixed it-ish. Now, what I will do, uh, I just feel like this area could use a bit more life. So I'm, I'm doing some green I'm just gonna do some green streaks across here. I'm trying to just touch. I don't know if I like that. I can just widen it up like that. And then definitely underneath the horses, I'm doing a bit of Payne's Gray 
with this green, so basically a little dark green. And I'm gonna go underneath and just give us a bit of a shadow. Oops, probably shouldn't have done it in between the two horses, two sets, I mean. What I can do actually while it's still kind of wet is lighten that up, spread it out. And then we have that just a bit underneath and a bit underneath. Do a few more streaks. I'm going to go a bit of a darker color. Okay, put a few of those in. Put some on this side. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Might go back and make that mountain dark in the end because it just looks really pale back there. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to just take a uh, sap green. We'll do some Payne's gray. I'll put in a bit of brown touches here and there. And we'll start over here. I, it's still going to be pretty light. It's definitely not going to be as dark as the picture which I'm happy with. I just think it needs to be a little darker than it is right now. Because right now it's like this pale sickly mountain in the back. Uh, okay, add in a bit more green. So I'm just trying to vary my colors, put in some browns here, put in some Payne's gray. Just because especially in the distance, you'll see quite a bit of variety something like a hill or a mountain gives us the illusion that yeah we're seeing it from afar and it's not like a coloring book one shade or something put some more green in there green's gray And I probably should have been a little more careful about my edge down here. So I'll just go back and straighten it out a bit. I'm just adding a bit so that it's not like one straight line. So just a bit of a spot there where we have those two break. Okay. We'll go back to the gear here now. So for the ropes, I'm gonna be using ultramarine and then I'm mixing it with the burnt sienna, which is how my burnt sienna got so messy to begin with. So it's just gonna keep getting messy. I might need to give this a bit of a spray just cause some of it is getting dry. So I just take my spray bottle and give it kind of a couple sprays and just soak some of those pans. Okay, um, now I want the, the ropes to be a little bit to the blue side. So I don't want them to be too black. So that is dark, but still bluish. And we will go and put one of those in here. And then another here. And then there is, this last one's kind of lost a bit in a fold. And then it gets, there's a thick kind of decorative piece here around the door. I'm just going to mix up a little more of this because it's gotten a little too watery. And then this one will have going on a bit of an angle meeting up with this bag or whatever it is. And then this one, perfect opportunity to have it go behind. And that bicycle, we need to make sure it doesn't get lost in there. I'm gonna, there's a little pile of stuff in here. 
it's just going to be like that. Actually, we can have it come right over the, the pail, and then that will kind of bring out our pail nicely, define that edge a bit more, just like that. Okay, bicycle, we may as well do that while we're here. So for that, we are gonna go handle, handle. Uh, there's kind of a, there's the seat. Tire, tire, there's a bunch of white maybe that we'll put in. There's a bit of here. Yeah, the rest of that is kind of white, so we'll leave that. Uh, this jug, we will just maybe put a bit of a touch. Whoops, I, that is too much. Bit of a handle there. Maybe we can bring out like kind of that design on the side. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a yellow ochre and just mix that with what we already have. For this is for the door decoration, and it'll pretty much end up being the same color as what we were doing earlier. Actually, maybe I don't like that. I'll do yellow ochre instead and uh, burnt sienna. So we'll kind of end up with this yellowy brown. Go over that. And then there's three panels. Just checking to see if I was picking up <laughs> color from the mountains. Okay, now there is some kind of decorative writing. So what we will do is just do a bit of squigglies. Some squigglies down here. And then some at the bottom. I think we might retouch that door just because it is a little bit light. I have a little bit of this shadow color. I'm just going to do a little bit on the top of this area, right up here, just to define that. Okay. Now at the bottom, there definitely is, there's a darker line that goes right around the bottom, so I'm taking uh, ultramarine, burnt sienna, we'll do that dark down here. And then we should probably bring out a little more of a shadow down there as well. Go right underneath the door. Oh, and I forgot this. There's this strap that goes right over the top. Right here. It's getting a little light, so I will darken that up and there's a tiny little knot where it's tied in with this thing and then it comes across let's go back over here because it's lighter than the rest okay taking the same color I'm just gonna add a little more burnt sienna so we tend ooh, more blue tend a little more to the brown side than the blue but it's still dark and we will go in here and we're gonna do our three little slots okay and then I'm just going to take Payne's gray actually I could just use the same thing same color and we'll just go like that for that smokestack right through into that middle section. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little, so I have kind of this gray, mixing it with the brown. <clears throat> it's probably too dark. I'm just gonna go like that, like that. Just add a little bit um, for some of those folds and stuff and the creases. There. 
All right, we will add the white in there. I think I'm gonna put a layer, thin layer of gray over the door. I should probably use a bigger brush. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is that little brush, the bristles are a little too stiff. And if I try to go over the door and just gray it up a little bit, um, I'll probably end up pulling off paint. And I know from my last painting on this paper, this uh, paper really pulls paint off easily. So I'm just gonna go like that. Oof, don't touch it more than that because it will start to pull stuff off. I am going to though gray up this corner right here. Just gonna make that a little more gray. And then we will gray the bottom. So I'm taking, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going some Payne's gray and we'll just go down here, add a bit more of a shadow. Can you tell that I haven't been teaching kids for a little while? Suddenly my voice goes when I'm talking for like, what is this, 10, 15 minutes? Alrighty. Okay, a few little things to add in there. I'm gonna let that dry. We'll add in the white and that red bag. So, white for the bike. I'm just taking it straight out of the tube again like I've done in some of my other videos. Do the handlebars. A few little lines down there for the, kind of the frame of the bike. Bring out some of the wheels. I'm just gonna do the bottom of this can because I should have let it sit in front of that part. There we go. So we'll do this red cloth. I am using a, a cool blue. So this is, I believe, Carmine. I don't honestly use reds very much. Um, I don't know why I have, I have some colors that I have in these little half pans and some in the full, and I'm kind of annoyed because there's some colors that I would one more color that I would still like to fit on, um, but I can't. And my reds are taking up so much space and I barely use them, or I don't use them as often. So I have three reds and at least one of them could be a half pan. All right, sorry, I had the video cut out on me there. Um, so I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray and we will just touch some of this, whoa, my right hand side of this cloth. or bag or whatever. And I might just do, whoa, forgot I have red. Do a bit of a shadow on this side of the jerry can. Like that. I'm also gonna just, I'm just taking some, I have this gray sitting here and I'm just gonna bring out the bottom of this as well. Okay, one other thing that I was, Looking at before we finish, uh, ooh, a couple things up here. Just wanted to darken up some of this, and then I feel like this is a giant expanse of really light green, and I kind of want to break it up. So I'm just going to take what I have here, which is kind of a grayish green mixture, put in a bit more green, a bit more paints gray. And I'm just going to go over, like I did here, right, and here. I'm just gonna go over some spots. What I wanna do is keep the space where the horses are um, clean. And I also like that green spot, or yeah, yellow, yellow spot. So I'm just gonna try to bring in a bit more dark while still preserving spot where the horses are. Just to break it up. And that line might be a little too strong, so I'm just taking a clean brush and breaking that. 
Same thing here. Just go like that. There we go. Just gonna add a couple birds and we will be done. So I'm just taking Payne's gray, blue, whatever, up here. Do a couple light ones. And then we'll do a darker one. It's hard to make them look random and not purposeful. One more thing. I'm gonna darken up the front. I have done this on some paintings, so taking sap green, paints gray. I've done this on some paintings before, um, if you would have seen them. So I'm just doing the bottom, and the reason that I'm doing that is to give it a bit of a vignette look. So I just want it to be darker down here. You can't even see some of it because it's underneath the ledge. Um, but I want it to be dark at the bottom and lead your eye into the painting so that the light spots are there, you know, the actual gear, and then um, obviously the horses in the background. There we go. I just don't want that to be a crazy strong line, so I'm just gonna go like that. And that should be great. We'll call this done. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed that. I would like to know um, whether you liked seeing the my palette as I was mixing, painting along, um, and whether you'd like to see that in more of my videos or not. So if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment and letting me know whether you like that or not, that'd be great. Uh, any other comments would be welcome as well. And yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you in the next video. See ya.